Hello, my name is Parker Lilly, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my portfolio that I applied to uh, universities with and just talking a bit about it. So yeah, I um, went to high school in Toronto. I went to Etobicoke School of the Arts and loved it. And now I'm currently going into my third year at School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, which is connected to Tufts University. So that's where I'm at now. Um, in terms of the whole application process, I think I ended up applying to around 23 schools or getting accepted to 23 schools. Um, I will not say all their names because that will take me so long, so I'll put them on the screen. But um, the schools that I was most interested in, I'll just name a few. So I was interested in School of the Art Institute of Chicago, Cal Arts, San Francisco Art Institute, uh, Rhode Island School of Design, Tufts University, where I'm at now, and School of Visual Arts, uh, SVA New York. So I know it seems a little crazy that I applied to so many schools, but just for some background, I'm Canadian, um, and I knew that I really wanted to go to school in the US, um, and I just basically looked at all of the art schools and fine arts programs in the major cities around the US and applied there. Um, I didn't exactly know what I was looking for and I also knew that, um, I mean, American universities and colleges are so expensive. So I was trying to find a program that would be able to also help fund me um, and get a scholarship or financial aid so I could actually attend. So yeah, just keeping my options open, I applied to so many. The portfolio that I'm showing today is around like 20 images. I think that was sort of standard for most of the schools. And before I go into this, I just want to say that I am going into my junior year of university at uh, SMFA at Tufts. So these pieces are from a few years ago. So I'm going to do my best to explain my thinking and show them, but they aren't recent, uh, so they're not really fresh in my memory. And yeah, at the end of this, I think I'm going to show like a few of my current pieces so you can sort of see the development up until now. Um, but let's just get into it. So the way that most of the applications work was it would have some sort of written component. It was different for each school. Um, mostly it would be an artist statement um, for a fine arts program. And sometimes you would do a Common App essay. And Common App is uh, the program that a lot of the schools use for people to upload their essays on. And yeah, I can't exactly remember what I did for that, but I know that I applied with my portfolio using Slideroom for I think every single school. And Slideroom's an online program where you can basically put all of your pieces into uh, a specific order that you want and write a description about them. Okay, so. The first image that I had in my portfolio was of a painting that I did. I will put it on the screen. Um, and disclaimer, I don't have any of my pieces in person. A lot of them are old and very big and somewhere else. So yeah, this painting that I'm putting on the screen is 9 feet by 7 feet. So it's the largest painting that I ever made. And I think that's sort of why I chose it first. I wanted it to be like boom, you know, this large piece, um, and it's acrylic on canvas. All the paintings that I had in my portfolio, I believe, were acrylic. Now, I mainly work in oil, um, but in high school, I taught myself to how to paint using acrylic. And this painting is sort of the beginning of the series of work that I have in my portfolio. Um, in a lot of my photography and installation work that I'll show you later, I like to use shadows and I like to use like physical shadows, of course. So I thought it'd be interesting if I um, created a large cast shadow on the face and I've done this in another painting. And yeah, at this point I was mostly doing portraiture. So the next piece that I have is a part of a series of paintings all called the Crying Series. Um, and they're named after the person that I painted, which I mostly paint um, my friends. I like to paint people that are close to me just because it's easier and I feel like there's comfort on both sides. Um, and yeah, it's a series of large-scale paintings 
and I can read some of the description that I wrote at the time. So I said, I'm interested in questioning the authenticity of an image. Each painting starts from a photograph of one of my peers and a self-portrait. The images are intentionally close-cropped. The canvas proportions are similar to a photo captured on a phone. The over-life-size scale, the stream of tears added to the face, it all invites a reaction from the viewer, either an unconscious choice to trust the image presented, accept and empathize with it, or to distrust the image, to question or doubt its authenticity. In the end, the painting can only conjure the authentic subject and the control over its message remains with the viewer. So at the time I was really interested in exploring what an oil painting can do that starts from a photograph. And it was kind of started off of me thinking about how over consumable images are. Um, and specifically, you know, on digital platforms, on social media, and how we can create an image that people will um, empathize with this image of someone crying yet we don't always know if it's true or not um, and it's just weird and I like the idea of messing with it so yeah that was something that I was exploring at the time and then after that I actually put uh, some photos into it which are uh, photos from a show that I had because I really felt like my work I wanted it to be able to uh, be displayed in the setting because um, my paintings are so large scale and I felt like that is an important impact of them especially because I like the uh, I, I mean at the time I really liked the presence that a large painting has and you standing in front of a face that's so over overly exaggerated over life scale so these are just two images from uh, Portfolio Day which was an event at Etobicoke School of the Arts so the next uh, image that I have in here is, uh, I just said, a portrait of Julia. And it's my first oil painting and it was completed right around the time that I applied to schools. I personally am not a huge fan of this painting, um, but it was my first oil painting. So I felt like, you know what, I'm not in love with it, but it's also good to see growth in the fact that I can use other mediums. And then the next one after this is a self-portrait. This one was made um, about like a year before I applied, so right around the time that I started uh, painting. And it's a self-portrait, and I wanted to, at the time, work with the pose and uh, make my body compressed and small and sort of guarded. That's why I did the composition, so there's so much space above it, um, and I'm just sort of squished into this bottom of the painting. Again, just working with composition. The piece after this is called Time Worn, um, and this is a painting of my grandmother's hands. And I really was, at the time, fascinated by the idea of skin uh, telling a story and skin holding our history on it and uh, what 80 years of life looks like on our hands and our hands being the way that we interact with the world, um, the way that we touch things, the way that we hold things. Yeah, I mean, this is a painting that uh, I still sort of feel like holds a little place in my heart because it's of my grandmother's hands, but yeah, again, sorry, I haven't been saying the sizes. Um, the, the size of this painting is 2.3 feet by 3.5 feet. So again, a lot larger than life scale. That was what I was really interested in doing at the time. Uh, the next piece are a series of four paintings. Uh, just a tip for anyone applying with slide room, uh, you can get away with putting multiple images in the composite. For this, they're small paintings, a lot smaller than my other paintings, and they all work in series. So I wanted to show them together. So that's what I did. Um, and I call this FaceTime. And each painting is uh, 1.4 feet by 1.8 feet. It says, again, I'm just reading my description here, but it says a series of small paintings that take as their subject. Expression, exaggerated emotion, and the close crop of the phone camera lens. These canvases were painted quickly and repeatedly in an attempt to extract a more authentic image from the photographic source. I was really interested in the relationship between uh, photographs and, as you'll see in my installation pieces, photographs that are then transferred into oil paint versus photographs that are then transferred into another physical material um, and distorted. And yeah, um, these paintings, again, are acrylic 
and uh, they were done super quickly. Normally I'm someone that will spend weeks, if not sometimes months, on a painting, uh, but these ones I did in one session each just to sort of purge out this image quickly. The next one I have is called False Self, um, and these are again two images that I put together in a composite. The way I made these were I uh, got archival pigment prints of photographs that I've taken of, again, my peers, my friends around me, and I printed it out and then manipulated on top of them using a gold pen to draw. And again, I wanted to reinforce this idea of artificiality and I loved just manipulating photographs. Photographs was sort of the basis of this whole portfolio, um, like what can I do with them? And I'm just going to read a little bit of the description. So I said, when photography reduces us to 2D form, a level of hon honesty and authenticity is always lost. I emphasize the false reality of the photograph by imposing a grid structure over the subjects in the photo. When direct light is shown on the print, it obliterates the photo underneath, leaving just the illuminated grid I've created. The now visible image is constructed representation as well. So that's why I use this material. The metallic gold pen over top reinforces the photograph, but then when light's shown on it, um, it completely just takes over and illuminates. So yeah. One thing that I really had a hard time uh, figuring out around my portfolio was that a lot of my pieces I felt like had a physical presence and I think artists feel this all the time. I wish that the people that were looking at my portfolio could experience this in person and I could show them what it looks like to have light on them um, or I could show them how it feels to stand in front of a large painting or anything like that but it's just not the reality of it so I think that's why it's really important to try to get the best photos that you can of your art so moving on the next piece that i did was the largest photography slash drawing piece and it's a gold pen on archival pigment print again and this one was nine prints altogether. so in total it was 10 feet tall by seven feet wide so it was pretty huge and i basically got these panels printed out because i couldn't print out one archival pigment print of course it's 10 feet. This image is inspired by Plato's Allegory of the Cave and philosophy is something that I've been really interested in for a while and specifically in high school I was super interested in really reading philosophical texts but also the Allegory of the Cave is just sort of an iconic piece that is um, pretty recognizable and widely understood. So in the Allegory of the Cave he describes a world where humans are chained facing a cave wall and unable to see anything but distorted shadows that appear in front of them. The prisoners, us, are convinced that the shadows are living beings and we accept without doubt the artificial nature of our reality. The relationship between shadow, reflection, and light are a vital part of the allegory. And as you can see throughout the pieces that I've made so far, and even like my first painting, which was that large one with the shadow in the face, this idea of shadow, light, and um, darkness are all used as metaphors and were something that I was really exploring at the time. So I love this allegory because it tied into um, all these aspects together, but it also talks about how easily we accept artificial images as our reality, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm not just rambling here. Also the image of this piece was a reference to Raphael's School of Athens painting. And then I have some details of this. So the next piece that I did was uh, what I call mirror image and they're ink transfers. It's a printmaking method that I actually just read in a book once and tried it. And yeah, what I really liked about this piece was that I couldn't directly control it, although I could sort of plan it out and try to direct the ink because of the technique, I never directly touched the final image. So now we'll move on. Um, I'm almost finished. So now what I sort of moved into was my uh, photography, but my more photography and installation pieces. So this piece is called Puppets, and each of these are transparent, almost glass-like images. And they're images that I take, I, I took, and then I put onto this plastic sort of artificial glass material and expose it to heat, and I just let them go wild. So they're all 
almost photographic objects now um, that were clear and translucent and yeah this is what happened so these are just the photographs documentation of them and I say here that through this natural distortion process as the artist I give up control and my subjects lose control over their image and the way that they will be represented as these 2D images become three-dimensional and tangible, they warp, shrink, and ultimately coalesce into a singular image from their overlapping portraits. And I basically just viewed these as hybrid images which were distorted through heat. And this is just a close-up. Again, I wanted to sort of show one that I really liked. They're each about 4.5 inches by 3 inches. The next piece that I have is an installation. It's sort of the only installation that I had, and it's from a show uh, that I had through my school, and I named it Utopia, and it is made out of rebar, wire, metal fencing, Tyvek. I wanted a space that I could display the puppets in, and um, I really like the fact that they interact with light well and I thought that it really worked in my work. Again, I've been using shadows, light, darkness and all of my pieces. So I showcase them in this completely dark room uh, which had uh, this installation in the center. The installation is sort of a reference to Tatlin's tower. It was a tower and building in honor of the Russian Revolution and it was a symbol of sort of this new age of technological advancement which embodied this idea of utopian thought. Yet, it remained unrealized and is more successful in theory than in practice. And what I was really thinking about was the limitations of digital spaces, the limitations of photography, and although we have so many new um, ways to interact with one another, interact with the world, I think that there are limits to it and yeah, again, I was just playing with this idea of authenticity. Again, hopefully I'm making sense. I haven't looked at these pieces for a while so I'm sort of trying to remember and look back at my descriptions to look at them but yeah, these are some detail shots which again I put in because I feel like they were important and showcase how the puppets um, actually work with the installation and then the final thing is another shot from the show and you could sort of see the scale of them all right so that was basically the most standard um, portfolio that I had to do for most of the places of course it was slightly different based on the schools that I was applying to and there was a few schools I think about like one or two that asked for some figure drawings or still life um, which I don't have and I'm not going to show but Honestly, I didn't take a lot of like actual still life or figure drawing classes growing up and it was not something that I was used to. Of course, um, as I've shown, I use a lot of photographic imagery. So it was absolutely not in my comfort zone and honestly, I believe that my pieces were pretty mediocre and I got by with them. So definitely no masterpieces there. Um, but yeah, I think... Just in terms of some tips for applying, I would say that it should be important um, to look at the order in which you put your pieces in. Um, that was something that I, th I put a lot of thought into because I wanted to sort of go from one medium to the next to the next. So I started with painting and then um, talked about how painting relates to a photograph and then I put my photography pieces and then I put my little installations, my larger installation. Um, so yeah, I wanted that to sort of speak to each other. And even if you don't have an artist statement that's very connected between all your pieces, I still think being intentional about what pieces go next to each other, even just aesthetically wise, is a good idea. Um, and also, I wish I could have told myself back then that it's okay to not know exactly what you're trying to say and exactly what you're doing. I think that a lot of schools want to know that you're passionate about what you're doing, you're able to experiment, use different mediums, and you don't have to have a artist statement that's going to absolutely change the world. You don't need to know exactly where you're going. Um, I think passion and some skill and all that is absolutely enough. So I put a lot of pressure on myself to try to figure all my art out back then when I still don't have it all figured out now. Oh, and then another thing is to edit your photos well. This is so important. 
Um, take time to take good quality photographs, borrow a camera, and edit them on Photoshop or Lightroom. I do Photoshop um, just to color correct. I just want to make sure that the photographs actually look like the ones in person. Um, because unfortunately, it's often that we have these pieces that function so well in person and then you see them through a photograph and they just don't deliver. So you're, you know, giving your best shot by at least taking good photographs. And then, finally, I uh, did say at the start that I go to school at the Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts University. And I made that decision because I like the program there. It was super interdisciplinary and I could experiment. It was open, which is really what I was looking for. And then also they were able to get funding, which is super important. And that was, you know, one of the main factors to me picking where I was going to go. All right, and I think that's it. Um, before I go, I will show some of my current art uh, just quickly and um, you know, just talk a little bit about it. Just so you can see what I'm working on now and how it sort of looks different, I guess, three years um, down the line. So yeah, I've been doing some oil paintings still, some manipulative photography, some regular photography, um, working with distortions, light and shadow. And it's funny because I feel like I really did come back to some of the things that I was working with in high school and I feel like my art kind of did a full circle. Of course it feels and looks a lot different now, but in a lot of ways I'm still sort of working physically in a way that I did similarly in high school. Conceptually though, I feel like I've expanded a lot more. But yeah, I'll stop it there. Um, thank you so much for watching and if you want to support me or see more of my art, my Instagram is on the screen. It's Parker Lily TM um, and my website is parkerlily.com for you to see my art and hit me up for any inquiries. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day.